Welcome back on the AM show. And if you look behind me, you can guess we're going to be talking about the classroom. Yes, education. In respect of what former President John Dramani Mahama has said in terms of cancelling the teacher licensure exams. Now, this has come a long way. Already, the criticisms have started about the fact that he was going to initiate this in the first place. Uh, as captured by the Daily Guide today, the Daily Guide newspaper. But there are also the other aspects about the purpose the teacher licensure exam is serving, whether it is up to scratch, whether it's um, the, the different aspects that go into it are fit for purpose, whether the failure rates are not indicative of something fundamentally wrong with the exam itself. But on the other end, should we just have these teachers en masse go through the system without having gone through some testing process, without being able to certify that these people qualify to be in the classrooms? All these dimensions of the conversation we're going to be having this morning as we're joined by our guests, Larry K. Agbado is editor, Teacher Education Journal. We also have Peter Notchu. Uh, quote to a ranking member, Parliament's Education Committee, and Dr. Peter Ante, Executive Director, Institute for Education Studies. All of them join us this morning. Good morning, gentlemen. Thank you for joining the conversation. Good morning, Ben. Uh, okay, so let me see whether I have the others uh, joining the conversation as of now. Mr. Nochuko to uh, Dr. Peter Ante, can you hear me? Okay, I'm, I'm not getting any responses from them. I'm, so. getting, I'm, I'm on the line. Hello. Okay, uh, Mr. Nochukoto, a very good yes. morning to you. I believe yes. you are the one I'm hearing. Yes, I'm the one. Okay, thank yeah, you I'm so much, here. sir, uh, for joining the conversation. Uh, Dr. Thank Auntie, you. can you hear me? I'm also going to hear you. Okay, you, you nearly yeah, pulled the... So I can hear you. All right, you nearly pulled the Houdini on me. I, I couldn't find you. Anyway, so... To situate the conversation, even before we get to what the former president has said, and uh, there's a video, if, if, if it's fit for purpose, we may just play it so that it is clear in the minds of you and our viewers what we're addressing. But I'd like to find out from you, the 2024 budget, okay? What is your overall thinking of it? And I want you to situate it within the conversation of um, education and what was said about education. But before we go there, let's uh, look at what the former president had to say in particular respect of the teacher licensure exams. Here's former president Mahama. And to us, you say, and yes, what has the colleges of education no? I dear almost train Quadano, a new pempens, a baby, a was a drawer, a was so young who be be now almost to me a young exams no more pee. A year then and Quadan on the bat training college four years. No much raw exam. A Phoebe almost raw exam. A Phoebe almost raw exam. A drew fourth year, no much raw final exam. No more pass it. You are passing if you are just on my teacher for no. No, as what I say, almost I'm back to exam BBO and send a major woman to be some way teacher for. Hey, so in the end, you see a balance and share exam. You be here for you. Me ask you, and she share your be here and make you sure, sir. Ni pe bia o be ko college of education o be wie no na e chese o ye teacher ni akuku dam o ye teacher ni a onim mejuma e wo so be ye So that was the former president uh, gentlemen let me start the conversation with Dr Peter Anti on um, the substantive matter but before we do like I said the 2024 budget had its own dynamics, especially in respect of education. What were your takeaways? Gentlemen, I want to hear from you on these matters before we get to what the former president uh, just said. I'll start with you, Dr. Antti. Good 
Dr. Peter Auntie, yeah, if you can hear me, that. please unmute. Yeah. yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me, please? I can hear you. Please go ahead. Great. So, uh, good morning. Um, I hope everyone is doing well. Yes, I have, I've, I've gone through the 2024 uh, budget. Uh, for me, I can just use one word to uh, express my opinion about that particular uh, budget, and it's that it's unins uninspiring. It is uninspiring. Uh, as, aside the fact that we've seen some uh, um, increase in uh, capitation grant, I mean the total amount of money allocated to capitation grant, I don't see any other um, um, striking uh, initiative in, 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 in that budget. We are, we are told of the normal uh, free SHS and other things that uh, 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 they, they, would, they would tell us. And, and I was thinking that this being the last budget, there would have been both statements as to how we, we look at the free SHS going forward. There will be both statements as to how we finance our basic education, not just increasing capitation grant, but also ensuring that enough infrastructure is provided for that particular uh, sector. There will be a bold statement as to the way forward in terms of the capping of the um, of the GET fund and, and so on and so forth. But I, 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 I am, um, it's unfortunate that I, would, I didn't see any of that thing. And, that, and for me, for the education sector, the budget is very, very uninspiring. All right. Uh, let me come to you, Larry uh, Agbado. You are an ed editor with Teacher Education Journal. Were you as uninspired as Dr. Anti was, or did you find more meat uh, on the bones? All right. So, so in fact, when, when you asked the question, the first thing that came into my mind was also uninspiring. So when I heard uh, Dr. Anti mention that, I was just smiling. For wow. me, this, this is a budget that... For the education sector, I see it to be lifeless, especially for the field of teacher education, the colleges of education. The colleges of education for the past probably six, seven years have been struggling with infrastructure. Governments about two years ago decided to award 300-bed hostel facility for all the 46 public colleges of education to address the infrastructure needs that has led to the introduction of the shift system, which they don't want to call double track in the colleges of education. So I was, in fact, th those projects were supposed to be completed this year. And as we speak, majority of the colleges, if not all, have not even seen the faces of the contractors that are supposed to even undertake those projects. So uh, going into an election year, someone like me, I was expecting that at least some priority should be given to the colleges in that regard but uh, it looks like that is still hiding somewhere and uh, we, are, we are waiting for god to perform a miracle for the colleges in the one year ahead because it's really causing a lot of problem in the training of teachers for our country thank you for those initial thoughts uh, mr koto you have the last word on the 2024 budget in respect of education and what you, you make of it. Uh, the two earlier speakers have said they found it uninspiring. Uh, what do you think? How did you find it? Hello, Mr. Nochukoto. Yes, I said that uh, I have found it very disappointing. Okay. Yeah, because I expected the budget to talk very much about uh, the declining quality of uh, basic education in the country. Mm. If you go around the country, you will realize that uh, the infrastructure that we have in our basic schools is deteriorating. Furniture is a challenge. Uh, supply of uh, TLM is a challenge. Payment of uh, uh, capitation grants and even payment for uh, the registration of students for the BEC examination and as well as the WASE, is a very big challenge. As we speak now, government is still owing white for this year's uh, BEC. Government is still with, uh, owing uh, WIAC for this uh, year's uh, WASE, and also owing for 20, part of 2022 uh, WASE. So the situation is very bad, and uh, the minister did not tell us how they were going to 
resource uh, basic education in the country to lay a very good foundation for the future. So I see the future of education very bleak, and this budget has not addressed it in any way. So for me, it's very disappointing. Uh, just a quick one that came to mind. There's also this um, problem that we faced in recent times. It's not just nurses that are leaving the country in droves for economic purposes. Teachers are also leaving in droves. And we've heard from, you know, Nat, among other groups, that we have to stem the tide of saying. Um, I didn't see much that would stem the tide of that as far as the 2024 budget is concerned. How do you feel about that, gentlemen? I'll start with you, uh, Mr. Koto. Just quick reflections, because I don't think we've really discussed that matter. Yes. Uh, the budget has not addressed that issue at all. What are we doing for teachers so that uh, they can remain in the country and then uh, teach our children? Nothing of that nature. No motivation for teachers has been mentioned in the budget especially those in the rural areas who have volunteered that uh, despite the conditions they will stay there and they teach our world for us there's no provision or there's nothing to motivate them to make sure that they deliver and for those who are living it is because of abcd can we start doing this so that uh, we can retain them in the country so the budget as i said has disappointed me and i, I don't see any good feature in the budget for this year to provide any incentives for teachers to remain uh, at post. Uh, Dr. Anti? Uh, same with me. I, I, I think that normally we, 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 we try to address challenges as and when they come in. In this time, as we, we are experiencing, this is one of the things that, that is happening to the sector. And I was thinking that there would have been at least a line or two to, to indicate the, um, the admittance of that particular challenge and then a possible way forward in addressing it. But as I said, this is a very uninspiring budget. Uh, it's like just performing an annual ritual, and that is what it was. Uh, for you, Larry. Yep, so, so uh, I, I wasn't actually surprised not hearing the Minister for Finance not speaking on that area. Because uh, the issue also comes up with whether we have the financial model. Uh, we government has given the financial clearance to the respective agencies like GES and the rest to recruit these teachers who are running, or even those who are in the system already. Whether we are providing enough incentives for them to motivate them to stay back. So. Looking at the myriad of challenges we already have, and I, I wasn't even expecting uh, government to even look at that area. Going forward, I, I suspect or expect that we are likely to even record more teachers living in the coming years. And uh, it may be seen as a bad thing, but on the other hand, it may actually also be taking the burden of government. <laughs> I see. It, it may be taking the burden of government in which in which particular sense do you mean because if if we have all this human resource at our disposal we are not able to recruit them we are not able to provide adequate incentives for them to stay back and uh, they, they find opportunities elsewhere and you know the uh, successive government both from ndc to npp now in the past have all been championing this cause of exporting teachers. So probably it, it just falls in line with what uh, they have been talking about over the years. But it, it, it's something that we should critically also look at so that going forward, it doesn't cause a huge problem uh, to us back here. But in a whole, we can look at it from both sides of the coin uh, as to providing opportunities for those who are here and not also getting any offer and getting there and then they have everything at their disposal. So I think, I think it's, it's a conversation that we can delve into looking at both sides of it. Let's now get to the substantive issue of the teacher licensure exams. Some would say the former president has stirred the hornet's nest or opened the Pandora's box, whichever way you want to look at it. Some are in support of what he said. Others say, no, this is mere propaganda. 
But how do we separate the fact from the fiction? I would like uh, Peter Nochukoto to start off with your assessment, and this is going to be the general question to all three of you, before we get to what exactly the way forward is. So far, the teacher licensure exam, has it served its purpose? Has it lived up to expectation, what it was meant to bring to bear in terms of the quality of teaching staff in our country? I'll start with you, Mr. Nochukoto. Has it lived up to expectation? So, if you look at the Education Bodies Regulatory Act of uh, 2020, that's Act 1023, the National Teaching Council is uh, mandated to conduct or award licenses to teachers so that uh, they can operate as the teachers. And the authority or the council decided to use the examination uh, model. Uh, that is where we depart from uh, the current administration of uh, licensure examination. You cannot use a two-hour or three-hour sit-down paper to license a teacher. You know, a teacher all over the years have undergone various forms of uh, teacher education. Uh, we started with uh, the two-year uh, set B, went to set A, four-year, uh, two-year post-diploma, three-year post-teacher uh, post, uh, uh, certificate to diploma. Now it is a first degree. So you can see the changes that have taken over uh, the years. And uh, we feel that uh, every teacher has something to offer. If a teacher goes to the classroom, what do we expect of that teacher? The teacher must be academically prepared. That is the uh, pedagogy. Then again, he must also be professionally uh, prepared. So we see two things about the teacher. So for us, as a NDC or the minority, we are of the view that uh, this current assessment is not the best. And we have different pathways that we can use to license the teacher, not necessarily sitting down for a three or four hour paper. And if the person does not do well, uh, he is said to fail as a teacher and he cannot uh, uh, perform or he cannot practice as a teacher. For us, that is where we depart from the implementation of the act. Okay, so clarify for me, because the former president said he would actually cancel the teacher licensure exam. So the clarity you're bringing to the matter is that you, you are for some form of exam to qualify people to teach, but not in the shape and form we have it now with the teacher licensure exam. Is that what you're saying? Yes, exactly so. And that's what the president also said. You know, uh, we have uh, 46 colleges of education in this country. Mm. And they are being mentored or supervised by different universities in the country. And they have faculties. We know there's a harmonization of uh, the faculties of these very supervising universities. So they must make sure that uh, the pedagogy, that is the content, subject content, is the same across the board. So that the level of uh, literacy, the level of numeracy will be the same for all teachers, all teacher trainees at the various colleges of education. Now, as I said, they all have faculties. And what is important is that it must be made part of the faculty curriculum. So there should be credit courses leading to the award of a license. For example, if there is a teacher being trained to come out and teach chemistry, he must take some examination in that chemistry to prepare him for licensure uh, as a teacher in chemistry. If there's somebody going to teach geography or basic education, yes, they must take some courses. That will make that assessment good at the end. So we are of the view that uh, the licensure or licensing teachers has become worldwide. 
But the model we are using now is not the best. You cannot use this sit-down program just to assess uh, a teacher that he can teach or he cannot teach. So we are saying that uh, we will develop portfolios of uh, teachers. And that portfolio will continue with them throughout the practice of uh, their profession. You know, by law, you have to renew your license. What portfolio are you building for the teacher over the years as he is teaching? So we feel very strongly that uh, the examination as it is now uh, does not give out the best uh, of teachers. Uh, you are subjecting them to some form of uh, assessment which for me does not depict, does not exhibit the talent that is uh, in the teacher. So the President uh, Muhammad Ashi was saying is that uh, we will give them license, but it shall be made part of the course that we will do, supervised by the faculty. And then we we'll make sure that the professional body that is set up to take care of these things are part of the curriculum at the colleges of education where the pedagogy and the professional ethics of the teacher will be part of uh, the subject that they will be taking. So you take credit courses, you pass, and then you are given the license, not a two or three hour paper. Um, that is an aptitude test. What they are doing now is aptitude test. It is not a test of pedagogy or professional ethics. That's how we see it. Okay, so you say it's an aptitude test uh, and not a real test of uh, pedagogy. All right. Uh, yes. le let me come to Larry, back to you. What do, what do you make, first of all, do you feel the teacher licensure exam has lived up to expectation? Um, has it served its purpose? Before we even get into, uh, you know, these other aspects that are being brought to bear. All right, thank you very much, Ben. So, so just, just a quick one. Uh, uh, when you're having your newspaper review, you mentioned a quote that I fell so much in love with, that one of the great mistakes is to judge policies and programs right. by their intentions rather I than... I yeah, think it is this one. Let me reiterate for you. Page 17 of the Daily Graphic today says it's from Great. Milton Friedman, a Nobel Prize winning economist. He says, one of the great mistakes is to judge policies and programs by their intentions rather than their results. Very good. So, so for me, this, like, answers it all. I, I feel a certain... Hello, Larry. So not Larry, to Larry we lost you. We lost you politics. briefly for I, about. I that, we've lost you for about thirty seconds. Uh, you say you feel okay. something right after the quote. Just go back to your thoughts. Yeah. So, so right after the quote, what I was saying is that I feel a certain portion of our national life should not be subjected to partisan politics, and one of these aspects is education. So it's, it sometimes uh, baffles some of us that we have to subject a very critical aspect of our national life, like education, to partisan politics. Look, the Ghana Teacher Licensure Examination is just like one of those exams that any other professional body, like the Ghana Law School, the Nursing and Middle Free Council, the Ghana Medical Association, the Dental Council, Institute for their people to go through before they are given that license to operate as professionals. So it's, it's, it's quite unfortunate that when it comes to education, and for that matter, what we are discussing right now, the issue of teacher licensing, we have to subject that alone to partisan politics, party A, party B says, when I come out, I'll do this, and it keeps taking us back and forth we end up not making any progress. Look, for me, since the exam was introduced in 2018, and at the time this exam was being introduced, I was a student leader by then. I, I played a very key role in this whole process. And I've heard Honorable Nochu talk about the fact that, okay, uh, we should, or they are going to implement uh, a portfolio system to see to the teachers, he, 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 uh, says, he, says, he says this is a test 
this is a mere aptitude test, which, for example, if you are applying for a job somewhere, or even it could be education, you could go through an aptitude test. It is not a real test of pedagogy. How do you feel about that? Because that's where you're going now. Yes. So, Ben, if, if I have attended College of Education for four years, if I have gone to university for four years, I have passed my exams, as, as stipulated in the Act, the, the Education Act, which clearly states that a student or a candidate can only sit for the license exams after he or she has successfully completed his course in any teacher education institution. So if I've completed my, my training for four years successfully, and I'm coming to sit for an aptitude test as described by Honorable Nochu, and excuse me to say, I fill that paper, it, it doesn't make me a failure. There's probably something I didn't get from my training that I need to go back to revisit and come back well prepared. So, so for me, look, the, there's something we are actually doing right. If we are not doing these things right, you see, the earlier conversations we were having about the export of teachers to UK and other places, these institutions or these countries wouldn't be rushing for our teachers. The likes of Senegal, Gambia, and other African countries. South Africa was in Ghana here about a few months ago to study our system, to learn from our system. So if we have other advanced countries coming to Ghana to learn our systems, to study our way of licensing our teachers, and back here, we are also here uh, kind of playing partisan politics with our system to know whether we should cancel this or not, then it means we are not making progress as a country. And I rose on this particular topic just about a fortnight ago. I, I didn't even know this topic would come up this way. But Ben, I think, I think the long and short of it is both parties going into election 2024 should just consult experts in propounding areas on this particular area of Ghana teacher and social examination. I see. Interesting thoughts in there. Uh, Dr. Hanti, how do you feel about this? Since 2018, we've gone down this road. Has it yielded the sort of results we would have wanted as a country? Because per that quote by Friedrich, uh, you know, the whole bit is not about policy or intent. It is about results. Have we reaped the results that we wanted? And what would be your critical assessment of this exam in the context of what the former president is saying? Thank you very much, Ben. Um, uh, it's, 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 a, it's a sad conversation that we are having this morning. Mm. Because uh, for me, I don't, I don't think that um, uh, any individual, uh, whether a politician or a minister, or, uh, should have this, a say in how people are admitted into a profession. It's, not, it's never done anywhere that the people within the profession are are uh, now being detected to as to how they allow people to enter the profession. And that is what, that is the conversation that we are, we are having. And for me, it is very, very unfortunate. The licensure exams have- But, but wait, wait, Dr. Anthony- the, the, Who could not write their names to the, te in the, teaching my children. If, if we are talking about outcome, it has helped in helping, it has helped in preventing people who Dr. Anti, go ahead. I, I wanted to interject, but I thank you. So you can go ahead. Hello, Dr. Anti. I think the connection to Dr. Anti may be uh, a little complicated right now. There may be some issues with the connection to Dr. Peter Anti, Executive Director of IFEST. Uh, Dr. Anti, can you hear me now? All right, we'll try to get uh, Dr. Anti back, but the point he was making was that there shouldn't be that interference in uh, something like this because, like has been mentioned by Larry uh, Agbado, it is the educational sector, and if you go to the nurses, the lawyers, uh, the dentists, those practicing medicine, among others, there are systems in place and exams that must be passed before a qualified candidate is allowed to practice. So why not in the teaching profession, which is crucial to all of these other uh, groupings that we have.
But the point he also uh, makes is that there is political interference. I just wanted to find out from him, uh, I don't know whether he's back now, but I wanted to find out from Dr. Anti. in all of this, the politicians always, always come to bear. They have an effect, whether it's free SHS, whether it's three years or four years for SHS, all of that, the politicians and uh, policymakers still come in place. So I don't know what he, he makes of that. Uh, Dr. Anti, please go ahead with your submissions. If nothing at all, it has helped in preventing somebody who could not write his name or write a simple essay about himself or herself from teaching my, ch my child in the basic school. Okay, it, it, we, are, we, we are working through a process. Of course, we have all seen that there have been changes in the, in the, uh, the licensure examination. It means that it is evolving, all right? And the fact that there are a few change challenges here and there does not mean that the process that have been put in place by the body that have been mandated by law to admit people into the profession should uh, be curtailed simply because there is a constituency that we think we can tap into and get votes from. And the only language that they understand is that they do not want to write the licensure exams. And I'm trying to tell you the reason why we are having this conversation. The students in the various colleges of education do not want to write the licensure exam. Why? Now, the politicians have seen because they think that it is a burden, an extra burden on them. But you see, the fact that you have gone through college of education for four years does not automatically make you a teacher. You see, that is, that is a challenge some of us have had over the years, that we think that the teaching profession is just anything that you just walk in and then you leave it, and you leave the profession, and that is it. And that is what all of us have felt when, when we were growing up. Now, there are steps to ensure that anything that is called a profession the attributes are being felt in the teaching profession. Those in the colleges of education mm -hmm. do not want to write the exams because they think that it is an extra burden to them. The, their counterparts in the other professions do write these exams. They have also done four years of training, like President, former President Muhammad said. They did four years. The nurses, they do four years. Okay, so it is not that this is something that is peculiar to the teacher and that we are trying to find ways and means to prevent people from becoming teachers. No, it is the regulatory body that determines the, the mode of admitting people into the profession. And in the mind of the regulatory body and its relevant stakeholders, in this case, the teaching, Teachers Association and then the other relevant stakeholders, they think that the, the way that they can admit people into the profession, because when you go to college of education after four years, you need to be admitted into the profession. And they are saying that we would admit you by allowing you to sit for certain exams. And when you sit for the exams and you pass, you are given a provisional license to practice. Within the period of one year, you undergo some probation and then you build your portfolio, something that the Honorable Minister is talking about, it's, it's being done. So you build your portfolio. After the one year, then you are given a permanent license. What other thing does anybody want the National Teaching Council to do? I, 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 will, I, will get, people to... I will get to um, um, uh, Mr. Peter Nochukoto on um, uh, that bit in terms of what exactly will go into this. But he makes the point. I want you to react to this, Dr. Ante. He makes the point that this appears to be a mere aptitude test. You've talk, talked about how over the years there have been some changes, but I've seen people question the methodology, the, the things that are tested, and whether they actually determine what level of knowledge, what level of capacity these teachers may have. Yes, there may be the odd examples of those who can't even spell their names or those who perform abysmally, but generally it's like, this argument of, okay, so you, you are going to read this course at university. You must have passed certain science-related courses. And some would ask, look, I'm going into the humanities, into uh, social issues. Why do I need that? What, so what do you make of that in terms of the real right. test? Is it a real test of pedagogy for these teachers coming from the colleges of education? Dr. Anzi. Yeah, so, so I, I, I wanted to round up. So, yes, it is a real test of pedagogy. You write, um, you write, I think, uh, three papers. 
you write a general paper, you write um, a general paper now consists of the uh, English and then the mathematics that they were talking about, that they think that some of them felt that they don't need it. You can't teach uh, uh, children when your simple uh, numeracy and literacy skills are not up there. You write a paper on pedagogy, and then you write a paper on the subject area that you are going to teach. This is the transformation the Ghana Teachers Licensure Examination have gone through. So you, if I'm going to teach economics, I will write a paper on economics. Then I'm, I'm supposed to write a paper on pedagogy. Then I'm supposed to also write a paper on my simple numeracy and literacy so that I can demonstrate that I can speak good, I can write good English, and I can just add one or two things when it, it, the, 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 the need arises. See, Ben, ben let, let me be frank with you. The reason why we are having this conversation is that the former president have seen a constituency that is reluctant in, in admitting that they need to write the, the licensure exams. We are entering into 2024. This is a big constituency that can vote for him. Of course, the same constituency did not vote for him in 20, 2016 because he, there was, there was a, a policy to try to uh, swap the, 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 their, their allowance system. Okay, So now he's tapping into that constituency. He's telling them what they want to hear. And that is what we are having now. This has got nothing to do with policies. It has got nothing to do with uh, uh, trying to make the teaching profession better. It has got nothing to do with improving the, 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 the skill of the teacher. In fact, it has got nothing to do with anything teacher education. It is just about politics. It's just about votes. And I'm, I'm surprised that the former president is throwing this line. Those who are advising him in terms of their teacher education uh, uh, policy are not doing the former president any good. So in, in summary, what you're saying is, um, if you look at the 2016 election and some of the promises that were made from the other side, oh, teacher's allowance, nurse's allowance, and all of that, all that fed into a wave. So this is just another form of propaganda. Is that what you're saying? This is, yes, this is just another form of saying what a constituency wants to hear. So you see, when he decided that, look, you are, you, are, you are tertiary students. You don't need the allowance. Let me give you the loans. The other party said, no, 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 no. You need the allowance. And then because at that time, the constituency really wanted the allowance, they, they bought into that idea and they voted possibly for, for the other party. Now he's seen that the constituency is complaining about the licensure exams. They have been complaining about this for a long time. And then he is trying to tap into that particular constituency to, in telling them that, look, when I come, I will scrap these exams. When you finish your training college and you write your final paper, the next thing is automatically you become a teacher. What profession are we trying to build? And that is very wrong. And I think that the former president and his advisors in education, uh, uh, my, my, my big brother, Honorable Peter Nuchu, my big brother, Honorable Clement Park, and those other people, they should rescind res this particular uh, push that they are, trying to, they, are, they are trying to do because they will end up spoiling the profession that we are trying to build. We are all teachers and we want the best for the profession. They are All right. Uh, thank you for those Hello. submissions. Uh, le let me bring in uh, Nochukoto now. How do you react to some of the criticism leveled against what um, the former president has said? And, and you spoke about pedagogy rather than an aptitude test. But you would also bear witness that, like has been mentioned, if you're going to teach chemistry, for example, you will have something along those lines, then you'll have the general paper, and you would have to show some numeracy skills, which I find to be the problem for most people. But I do agree that some numeracy skills are required, even in my profession, with what I am doing here. You require some numeracy skills to be able to dilate on some of the conversations on economics and all of that, without which uh, it would be pretty, you know, difficult. What is your reaction to that? And if you are going to tweak this licensure exam, are you considering the impact on teaching and learning? Is it not going to be at the service to Ghanaians? Mr. Nochukoto, that if, was for you. Yeah, if anybody sounded more political this morning, it's my brother, Dr. Peter Anti. Um, why, why do you say he sounds political? Yeah, um, he's said that uh, President Mahama is using this because of a uh, vote. So why? When we have feel, felt that uh, the mode of uh, licensing teachers now is not the best, we think there is a better alternative which we can uh, introduce. Why is he saying so? Now, 
If you look at uh, what President Mahama said, I don't know why people don't listen to him very carefully. When he talked about the review of the free SHA, it was meant to be a cancellation. In this case now, he said he's going to cancel the licensure examination. He's not saying he's going to cancel the licensure of teachers. That is not what he's saying. And his point is that the method we are going to use is that it is going to be part of the curriculum. You take it as credit courses so that you will be made, it will be made part of your life. If you are teaching or you are going to teach geography, your knowledge of that subject must be very broad. This is what he's saying. If you are going to handle basic education, what are the things that you needed to be taken through in the four years? So that by the time you get out of college, you are well equipped. Then also, what professional ethics do you need to acquire? So that when you get into the classroom as a professional teacher, anyone who visits your classroom, who visits your school, knows that, yes, this is a homemade teacher. So I don't see why people should say that it is a, a political a propaganda when we realize that what we are doing now is not good and we can change it for the better. So we are not joking with teacher education. We are not politicizing teacher education. In any way, uh, all other areas, are we saying that uh, politicians don't have a say? Were you not in this country when uh, some students uh, who applied or candidates who sat for the um, law school examination were declared uh, failed? The parliament not coming, the politicians not coming. And those people uh, were caught, so many of them were caught to the bank. Right, yes. the over 400, that's what yes. you're referring to. Yes. So, mm. in everything that we do, once government is in power, it, there's politics in it. And every political party wants the best for its uh, citizens. So, that is what President Mahama feels that no, we shall adopt a different method of licensing teachers not the three-hour or four-hour paper. So okay. uh, we are saying that you have a thorough training in that subject, you will uh, examine in it while you are in school, so that by the time you finish your college of education, you are a whole trained teacher. Now, currently, some teachers who completed 2022 are still at home. They are yet to be licensed. They are yet to be employed. Even when our classrooms are empty, the classrooms are empty. And teachers are leaving the classroom, either through uh, resignation or retirement. What are we doing about that? So for me, we cannot train the teachers, keep them for one year before we post them to the various schools where they are most needed to deliver on education. In any case, teachers have taught uh, our children over the years. Uh, was it because they were not licensed that uh, they were not teaching well? but our children pass examination. So when we are saying certain things, we need to be very careful about it because teachers, once they are trained, they are not only trained for classroom, they are trained for life. Uh, let me just you know, bring back a few points you've made and clarify. Are you saying, point one, that you're not going to scrap the licensure process. You've already mentioned that you're not taking away that. You're not going to scrap the licensure process, but you would change the licensure examination. That is point one, uh, the structure of it. Then uh, you also talk about focus from the colleges of education. So in other words, what, what I understand is that you are saying right from the colleges of education, there will be some specificity focus so that if you think you're going into chemistry, if you think you're going to, into geography, there's enough done to broaden your knowledge from, from that aspect. Is, is that what you're saying? That is what the president is saying, that as part of the training for you to come out of the College of Education after four years, the pedagogy that you are going for, you must excel in it. So there must be efforts to make sure that you are good in that. And you but but, but is, that, is that not already being done to some degree in the colleges of education? Yes, but the emphasis we are saying now is that uh, you are going to handle a subject or you are going to do basic education, primary education or secondary education or whatever. The emphasis we are laying on it is that 
we want you to be pedagogically equipped in that particular area so that when you come out and you have done very well, you have passed all your faculty examination, then you will be awarded the license to go and teach. That is all we are about. Not that you go and write a, a three-hour paper. I, and as part of that, you know, you must classroom management, assessment of students, all these are things that uh, the teacher must be uh, taken through while in college. So you pass your academic paper, then you do your professional uh, examination also as well. So that when you come out, the numeracy, the literacy, the subject content, we feel that uh, you are okay. So this is the pathway we want to take. So nobody should misunderstand President Mahama that he's coming to cancel Lysasia. No. He's changing the modality. That is what is important for everybody to understand. Okay, so Larry, it is the modalities that are changing. You've already expressed your thoughts, but there are some other questions that are you know, arising that I want to run by both you and Peter. For example, this one, uh, a message coming through. Darko Emmanuel on the live feed says, uh, good morning to you all. Please ask Dr. Anti that all those working groups he made mention of, what is their pass mark? Their pass mark is 50%. At least I can vouch for that for the entrance exam into law school. 50%, or at least what by and large, because there, there have been some stre streamlining where in sections A and B or parts A and B, you must secure about at least 25%. But it's 50%. And he says, for teachers alone, 70%. Why? That is something they are not telling you. Uh, we also have Abanga Sayuba Rashid, who says, please talk about the 70% licensure pass mark. The GTLE pass mark was 50%, and now it's 70%. Talk about it. It's not fair. What do you make of that? We all agree that there should be some sort of filtering through. But is this fair? What is your take, Larry? So, so before I respond to the past mark issue, let me just spend a minute to uh, clarify something. I heard Honorable Notri talk, uh, talk about the, the subject base and all that. But you see, the reforms that have taken place over the years in our education system are already addressing the things that Honorable Notri has mentioned. When you go to our colleges of education today, everyone is going through training based on their area of study. So the things he mentioned, a uh, Bachelor of Education in junior high or secondary or primary, that is already happening. And I heard him also mention that uh, sitting for a three-hour paper just to get license before you are posted. The papers are not even up to three hours. The maximum uh, time for a he, paper he, he, is... He did, mention, he did mention two to three hours. That's what he said. He didn't yes, categorically say three. The, the maximum duration for a paper is, is one hour, 30 minutes. And this, these are not exams that, excuse me, after going through training for four years, you have so much difficulty in writing. Now, back to the issue of the pass mark, yes, uh, you cited an example of the law school where it's 50% pass mark. I think the pass mark issue uh, is currently what is even delaying the exams that was written in September. Uh, you know, there, there were proposals that they wanted to raise the pass mark to 70%. But the leadership of the students also made an appeal to government through the Honorable Minister for Education that uh, they want it reversed back to the 50%. I think the minister has held uh, some consultations with uh, all parties involved, and they are currently considering that. I, I, I don't want to be the one to spill the beans out, but I think where the discussions are leading to, it's likely to reverse back to the 50%. We have to wait for probably a while to hear the final confirmation from the minister or any other relevant agency that has to inform us about that. But in a whole, uh, the example Honorable Notu cited about the fact that some few years ago, the law students who failed, about the 400 who failed, uh, I'm not sure that led to the discussion that they should scrap the entrance exams to the law school. And but you see, Sometimes but, but, but they, they have been serious, the uh, just because you're going down that See, road, the there, have been, there have been serious concerns it. about the entire process of, listen, even in the legal space, if people go through certain institutions, you know, guaranteed, 
certified by the, the, the systems, the powers that be in terms of dispensing legal education. I mean, back in the day uh, when we produced the same lawyers today, the, the older ones that we see, the, the, the stock uh, who think they are the best in the system, and maybe rightly so, they didn't have to go through those. You went through the University of Ghana and directly you went to law school. Did it water down the quality of those lawyers? So that is a different road to go down because it's, a, it's an yeah. entirely uh, so, it's a so, convoluted so conversation. That's, to that, that's very true. Uh, Larry, I can hear you. Go ahead. Hello, Larry. It's unfortunate. We have a network issue. I'll come back to Larry, but let me go to um, Dr. Antti on, on the same point. The pass mark, among others, they feel this is getting up to their eyebrows. How do you feel about it? 70%. Yes, I, 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 I think I, I was informed about this uh, some months ago. You see, we should, not, we should not miss the argument. If it is about the pass mark, we can have an argument about it. If it is about recruiting people after they have been licensed, we can talk about that. The point today we are talking about is that the former president is saying that the examination that has been introduced by the regulatory body that is mandated to admit people into the profession is something that is a nuisance and would be scrapped. And that is the point that we are making. So those people asking questions about past mark, and they, people, after having their alliances not being employed, these are things we can talk about, okay? But the point that we are now discussing is that the former president is saying that that examination that is now being used to admit people into the profession, you go and you are trained to become a teacher. There is a regulatory body mandated to admit you into the profession, just like all other professions that we have. And that regulatory body is saying that See, you have been trained in pedagogy. You have been trained in your subject area. You have normal, uh, 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 normal numeracy and literacy skill. Come, before I admit you into the profession, pro prove to me that you can do these things. That but Dr. Antti, as, been as has been explained, as has been explained by your fellow Peter, uh, same name. He says we are not scrapping the licensure process, but basically. No, the licensure no. exam, exam in its current form. That's what he's... Yes. I just wanted to reiterate what yes. he had said. Yes. So, so that is the point I'm also making. They want to scrap their exams, and that is what I'm talking about. And mm. I'm saying that the licensure process is something mm. that is in the remit of the regulatory body, which is NTC. And they have ag agreed with the stakeholders that before we admit people into the profession, so maybe you have to take your time and listen to me, this is the process. You go for, you go for uh, teacher education or teacher training education for four years. It could be in the university. It could be in the colleges of education. Mm -hmm. After you've done the four years, you are not automatically a teacher. And this should be made clear. You need to be admitted into the profession by the National Teaching Council. The National Teaching Council says that as part of our licensure process, as part of the process that we will admit you into the profession and give you license to practice in Ghana. You have done four years economics. You have done four years pedagogy. You have done four years, some, a little bit of numeracy and then some, a little bit of uh, uh, literacy. Prove to us that through this simple exam that you have really imbibed all these things for the past four years. So you come and sit for the exams and based on that, they license you and then you are admitted into the profession. What is so wrong about this? What is wrong about this that anybody would find it difficult to, 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 to allow it to happen? Because that is what is done in all other professions. You are okay. admitted into the profession. Point. The, the NTC is saying that we want to use the examination to test your knowledge because they did not train you. We should understand that it is not the entry NTC that is training you. The NTC is mandated to license you and admit you into the profession. And they cannot do that on a on a on a on a, 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 a open blanket pay, uh, uh, pace. 
they want to put in measures to ensure that they are admitting people who really possess the pedagogy. Okay, really so your point, I think, I think your point has been made and it's reiterated. I just wanted your quick take because people were talking about it as well. Do you feel the 70% pass mark is, is too high? And very quickly on this because we're wrapping the conversation. Is it too it's high? It's outrageous. It's outrageous. I don't know. I don't because it was fifty percent. I don't know why they, they, they decided to increase it to seventy percent. It doesn't make sense because it's a professional exam. Professional exams you have to get fifty percent, and that is it. And that is what all professional uh, um, bodies use: fifty percent pass marks. So the fifty percent is so outrageous. It doesn't make sense. And I think the earlier that they reverse it, the better it will be for all of us. Okay. And 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 lastly, let me make this point. Let me make this point. Um, okay, so so are you delivering your final your final remarks so that I don't come back to you? Is, are these your final right. remarks? All right, that is fine. Okay, all, all right. right, that is fine. The Honorable MP said that I am sounding political. No, I am passionate about the teaching profession. I have small kids that are going through the educational system. I might not have the money to take them to the best schools, but I want at least a qualified teacher who can write and read and do simple mathematics to teach them. I do not want anybody just because they have left the training college to now have the opportunity to teach them. They need to be licensed. And before they can license, they can be licensed, they need to sit for these simple exams and pass. And that is why I'm passionate. It is okay. not about politics. It is they that want to take polit political advantage of something that a group of people feel is not needed. And that is what they are doing. But All right. me, I am just pushing a policy that will help the future generation and also protect the teaching profession, the profession that we all Okay, love, Dr. Auntie, we, we, we're going to have to sew it up. Uh, thank you very much. Modesty Orafigo says, what I have noticed is that where I did my national service, in one senior high school, they lack teachers. Meanwhile, some people have acquired this license and are staying at home without being posted, and they are to renew the license within two or three years. Where do they find money to renew it? We are not against the licensure, but we shouldn't stay in the house while we have acquired the license. That's another aspect of the conversation. Maybe some other time we'll be looking at that. Larry, what are your final remarks in some 30 seconds? All right, thank you very much. So uh, my, my, my appeal to our revered former president uh, is that uh, if he really wants to come back, uh, this aspect of our educational life, he should have a second thought on it. Uh, scrapping the or canceling the teacher license exams, I'm not sure is the best uh, way for us now going into the future. Uh, we are certainly doing something right. That is why a country like UK will accept teachers from Ghana without even allowing them to write any exams again. And we must get this clear. The numerous teachers that are running to UK to accept teaching opportunities, if this licensure exams was not in place, if they get to UK, they will have written a different exams on its own again. But with the measures we have kept in place here, these gatekeeping measures that we have kept in place here. Are, are, you, sure, are you sure these people are not taking other examinations? Because I know, for example, for the medical doctors, for nurses and all of that, there are processes they go through. Barring whatever qualifications they have here, they still go through those processes to qualify ben, to, ben, ben, to, to ben, actually can, practice I, I there. Can confirm, I, I can confirm to you that even the officials from UK themselves travel to Ghana here to come and study our system, the system that the National Teaching Council is operating. And they were so impressed with what we are doing that they now had to give that approval or that open the opportunity for teachers from Ghana here. And I think the whole Africa is just Ghana and then uh, there's another country that have been given that uh, kind of So that has that arrangement. It. So mm. there's something we are certainly doing right that we must rather work on improving on and not uh, trying to play politics around it. I'll, I'll plead with the former president. There are certain things that when he brings up today, some of us will support him on. Subjects like the cancellation of the teacher trainees allowance, that one will be in for it. But issues of uh, the licensure examinations, uh, we plead with him to have a second thought on it, please. Thank you. Larry, thank you so much for the wealth of knowledge you've brought to this conversation. Uh, Mr. Nochokoto, you have the final word, your final thoughts. Hello, Mr. Nochukoto. Yes, I'm on the line. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah. Final thoughts. Yeah, thank you. Uh, our education in the country now is in a mess. A mess because things are not going on well. 
and we need to rescue education in this country. So President Mohammed's uh, promise of uh, casting the licensure examination is just one of the reforms that he is going to uh, undertake. So for us, we will support President Mahama to make sure that uh, we streamline the licensure process in the country so that uh, we don't uh, unduly uh, prevent people from uh, taking up uh, their profession. We should make it uh, uh, affordable, we should make it uh, more friendly so that uh, students can relax and over the four years they will prepare themselves very well and come as very good teachers. So we will support the agenda and any other thing that President Mahama suggests will promote quality education in the country. Latisha is just one of them. But, 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 but Mr. Nochukoto, you, you say that you support this and any other thing that the former president will suggest. But you know that it's a contest of ideas and that sometimes you will get it wrong. Sometimes it's possible uh, to get it wrong. You do admit that, right? Yeah, but it's a, a well thought through decision. If you go back to our uh, manifesto for 2020, it was there in black and white that that's what we're going to do. So we will bring it back in the manifesto. So it is now left for the students who are in the colleges of education and other universities that are um, teaching or uh, training teachers to decide whether this is good for them or not good for them. But some of us feel that it is the way forward. Thank you very much. Uh, right before we cap off the entire conversation, and uh, thank you very much uh, to all of those who joined, Larry, Peter, and Dr. Anti. Uh, I'll acknowledge you at the tail end, at the very end of the discussion. But we also have, we just had to sneak in this bit uh, to bring some you know, other perspectives to the conversation. Jephthah Nanakwame Sefa is president, Teacher Trainees Association of Ghana. We haven't heard from them. How do the teacher trainees feel about the comments of the former president. Jephthah, good morning. Good morning, sir. So we're trying to summarize this conversation. I don't know whether you followed. We've had Larry, we've had Peter, we've had Dr. Antti join the conversation. But what came to mind? How have you reacted to the former president's positioning that we're going to scrap the teacher licensure exam? Now, we've just heard from the ranking member on Parliament's Education Committee who clarifies that licensure, yes, there will be licensure. But the mode of licensure, the exam, is not fit for purpose. What's your position on this? All right. Thank you very much. And um, what we as teacher trainees have to say about this is that even before this announcement from the former president, uh, John Gomani Mahama, what we have been advocating for is that we believe that teacher licensing yes, is good. But the mode with which we acquire the license is what we are also talking about, that there could be some revisions. Because if it is about a certain examination, we probably might have gone through series of certain examinations in the College of Education, starting from first year to fourth year. And as it is said, that the license exam is a competency based exam that is to show that it's a, a candidate is able to demonstrate competencies and qualities of a good teacher before he or she is allowed to mount a platform in the classroom to do teaching. And so, if it is about certain examinations, we have done a lot. We have done a lot in the College of Education, probably. There could be other ways which they could use to assess our competencies before they give us the license and not necessarily searching for other examinations again. That is what we are looking at. So, so you say there could be other ways of testing your, your competence and all of that. So you've clarified that you think, yes, licensure, yes, which is what the, uh, the former president is also saying, but the mode of it. But you say there could be other ways of, of testing your capacity. Which other ways are you speaking of? Okay, so since we see teaching as a, a practical uh, course, teaching is all about, it's, it's a practical aspect of all things that you're talking about. And so even at the completion of our course of education, we go to our college of education to do um, teaching practice. That is our intensive. And that's one could even be used to test our competence because we go there to climb up all our learning that was associated with the teaching profession and what the teacher, the teacher should do. And we believe that that one alone could even be used to test our competencies. And even during the service, this is too critical. What the exam is meant to be is that before you're able to pass, the, before you're able to enter uh, business school and do teaching, you should be able to possess a line before. But it's a question we ask ourselves. During that service, once you practice teaching, 
currently the first cohort of the BA program are on, on the seventh year practicing teaching. But they are yet to attain the result of the line test and whether they or not they have passed. That is to give them the access to teaching. But they are already practicing teaching. So if there is some danger that they could pose, or probably some of them that might not be able to pass the examination are not fit for purpose, are not fit for the teaching job, they are already practicing. So we could even use various ways, like I said, that the uh, intensive that we do in the business school, or even doing the service, things could be deployed by the regulatory body for them to go and assess, assess that are we really doing what is expected of us as teachers, so they can give us the licenses and not necessarily be able to search for examinations again. So for you, what then would be your take on what the former president said? Are you for it or against it? So what we uh, what we were even seeing before former President Mahama was advocating for uh, reconsidering of the mode of assessment. But for the exams, we believe that it should hold, or uh, sorry, the license should hold, teachers should be given license, but the mode of assessment, we side with those speakers that spoke into where the former President Mahama said that we should review the process that we do for the license. Well, thank you very much, uh, Jephtha, for sharing your thoughts. I just see this message coming through. Uh, Kanpi Jibril uh, says they will not agree to cancel the exams because they are making good money out of it from us. Every candidate paid 500 CDs and they make millions of CDs from uh, the poor. Uh, Peter is saying the NTC does not train. That's okay. But who also trained the NTC officials? It's the same universities. Uh, it's unfortunate. Well, this conversation could go on and on, but taking away any political lenses, I feel we should do what is best for our country and for our education because guess what? Without education, without proper education, it's going to be uh, pretty problematic for us. So those who joined the conversation, Larry K. Agbado, editor, teacher education journal, Peter Nochu, uh, Koto, ranking member, Parliament's Education Committee, as well as Dr. Peter Anti, executive director, Institute for Education uh, Studies, together with Jephtha Nanakwa Misifa, president, teacher trainees association of Ghana. Now coming up next on uh, the AM show uh, today, Joy News and an amalgam of professional bodies present a public speaking event on a common manifesto for our common future. We'll be speaking to uh, Dr. Uh, Mr. Yawen Sakwa, I beg your pardon, and we'll be hearing from what exactly the plan is for this dialogue, what it seeks to achieve, and what we can expect in the coming days. That conversation up next on the AM Show. Do stay.